Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We welcome you here to worship at St. John's, both here in the sanctuary and online, as we ask God to set us free from negative forces in ourselves and in the world around us. Today, after worship, we'll gather for conversation and food in Fritz Hall. During fellowship hour, Sue Lalo will again be available to show people how to make the most of our new website. Our next Friday fun night will be on February the 9th. We'll be looking at the ways Jesus welcomes all kinds of people to eat and be friends together. With meals and food in mind, we are looking for a play kitchen that someone might be willing to loan us or donate for the evening. We should also make plans now to enjoy with all of us the Big Easy Mardi Gras brunch after church on February the 11th. If you can bring a dish to share for this potluck, but most of us, most of all, plan to come and enjoy some new festive time together. It is with sadness, but with faith and hope and the resurrection that we share the news that our sister Shirley Grishot passed away this week. Her memorial service will take place this coming Friday at 11 a.m. here in the sanctuary with a luncheon and time to visit with the family following in Fritz Hall. We give thanks for Shirley's life and we pray for her to be welcomed into God's eternal embrace. Pray for her family and friends to feel God's comfort and peace. May the light of God's perpetual love shine upon her. And now as we turn to our prelude music, please use the time of prayer to open yourselves more fully to God's presence in your life. Let us stand and turn for thanksgiving for baptism. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. 
through the sea. You led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word, you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be honor and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord and the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. As beloved children of God who share together in the gift of baptism, let us greet one another in the peace of Christ. First, we'll greet those of us who are worshiping with us by Zoom and YouTube, and then everyone here in the sanctuary. We turn now to sing our gathering hymn, Fourth Faith Begins by Letting Go. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know that your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading this morning is from the 18th chapter of Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, they are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. This morning we'll be reading responsibly Psalm 111. Hallelujah, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great, Great are your works, O Lord, on your delight in them. Majesty and splendor mark your deeds, and your righteousness endures forever. We cause your wonders to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you, remembering forever your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your works and given them the lands of the nation. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice, all of your precepts are sure. And be prospered ever and ever, because they are done in truth and equity. You sent redemption to your people and commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice this with understanding, God's praise endures forever.
The second reading this morning is from the eighth chapter of 1 Corinthians. Now concerning food sacrificed to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there are many so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom we are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscious, conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care of that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ has died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum. When the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then, there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Let's face it. This story from Mark's gospel about a public exorcism can't help but seem weird and strange to us. We don't often hear demons literally crying out in a struggle to God. We don't often hear demons whom God has exorcised screaming on their way out or making the person they've left shake and convulse on the ground. Ever seen that? I've only seen such things rarely in movies or in works of fiction. But here it is, the story that Mark puts at the very beginning of Jesus' public ministry. Coming first, we know it has to be important. It has to offer us clues about who Jesus is and what he wants to do in the world. Baptized, 
tested in the wilderness and now supported by a few followers, Jesus shows up in the synagogue to begin his public campaign in earnest. He teaches, and the people there for Sabbath worship are amazed that he teaches with assurance, with confidence, with authority. It's not the usual fare they hear from the regular scribes who read and interpret their scripture. It isn't the kind of teaching that leaves them feeling good that they've come and fulfilled their duty to God, but not quite sure what they're excited about or what they should do next. It isn't the kind of teaching that makes them yawn and wonder why they bothered to come in the first place. Why do we come to worship a God who seems so far away a God who seems unable or unwilling to see us and to help us with our problems. We already know from last week's gospel lesson what Jesus is talking about with such authority. Jesus is proclaiming the good news that God is afoot in their world. Jesus is telling them, repent, believe. The kingdom of God is at hand. He is teaching that God is not far away and removed, that God does see their hunger and illnesses, their poverty and their oppression. Jesus is teaching that God sees what they are up against, that God is planting a flag once more decisively in human history. God is staking out territory in which God's justice will prevail. God is working to see that everyone can enjoy the goodness of the earth, that everyone deserves to live without fear, and that everyone can stop waiting for the oppressive hand of the Romans to fall down upon them yet again. It is Jesus' clarity about the coming kingdom of God, about what God is doing in the world, that sets off the unclean spirit or the demon in the story. Jesus' teaching challenges the demon's greed and selfishness. Jesus' teaching challenges the Roman demon of disregard and violence toward Palestinian peasants whom they oppress. Jesus' teaching challenges the demons of despair that keep those peasants hopeless and inactive. No wonder the demon is worried. And so in the story, the demon cries out and challenges Jesus, kind of goes on the offense. Just what right, Jesus, do you have to challenge us? Have you come to get rid of us, to destroy us? Well, if you have, think twice before you try, because we know who you are. And if we reveal your true identity and purpose, then you'll be in trouble with the powerful people of the world. If they know your name, if they know your address, they'll come hunting for you. If they know your name, if they know your address, they will come to beat and destroy you. So let me shout your name out. You are the Holy One of God. Kind of dramatic, huh? But Jesus does not cower when he hears the demon's threat. Jesus does not retreat in order to preserve himself. Instead, drawing upon his authority as the beloved son who pleases God, drawing upon his authority as one who understands God's will for the world, Jesus tells the demon to be silent. Jesus tells the demon to come out, to give up, to leave alone the human being he has been afflicted. This silencing and calling out, this power Jesus demonstrates to tie up and bind the demons that afflict humanity is just a taste of what is to come later in his ministry. In Mark's gospel, Jesus will cast out more demons. He will even send his disciples to proclaim the kingdom of God and to cast out demons themselves. Can you imagine that? Having God's power behind you, the power to cast out demons in God's name. So what do we do with this strange, otherworldly story? 
as I said, it's not like we literally see demons getting up to shout, rage, and rant at Jesus. But do we do see people do that in public? It's not like we literally see the power of God exercising them as they leave the people they have possessed behind, trembling in both terror and relief. But just because we haven't seen an exorcism with shouting and convulsing, that doesn't mean demons no longer exist in this world and that we still aren't bound by them. We can name our own personal demons like addiction, anxiety, self-hatred, selfishness and dishonesty, insisting on our own way, being unwilling to change. Let's take a few moments in silence to face and name the personal demons who wish to possess us and the people we love. Take just a minute to think about your personal demon. We can also name some of the demons in our social systems, demons like the greed for power that makes leaders of one nation invade another nation and bomb civilians, the greed for control that makes politicians stir up prejudices and fear against minorities, the greed for short-term profit that makes corporations exploit the earth. Let's take a few moments in silence to name and face the larger demons who tie up our social systems with injustice. Mark places this strange story at the beginning of Jesus' public ministry because he wants us to know there's good news we can be excited about too. Jesus doesn't teach a ho-hum, mamby-pamby, play it safe kind of teacher. He teaches like a visionary, full of hope that the time for demons and evil in this world is short. Your time is short. Because God's rule, God's kingdom is spreading, God's power is gaining strength. Do people in the synagogue, are we today, have any doubts? Jesus' power and ability to drive out demons serves as evidence that the kingdom of God is indeed coming. It is indeed gaining strength in the world. Mark's good news about the coming kingdom of God offers us assurance Jesus is here even today. He is here to help us cast out our own demons, to silence them, to bind them up, to set us free. Jesus is also here to encourage us to feel empowered and not afraid, to call us to join as his disciples in the resistance and the effort to silence and cast out the demons that afflict us all. With that good news in mind, I'd like us to take some time to pray together again in a slightly different way. I'd like for us to pray for Jesus to cast our demons out just as he did in the synagogue long ago. So when you hear me say, we beg you, your response is, cast them out. Try that with me. We beg you, cast them out. So now let's pray together. Holy One of God, when the demons of resentment drive us to say harmful and hateful things about each other, we beg you. When our demons of personal selfishness make us think your love is limited and only available to us, we beg you. 
When our demons of fear and weariness make us silent and complacent in the face of injustice, we beg you. When the demons in our social systems say it is okay to savage and lie about people in the press and on social media, we beg you. When the demons of greed tell us it is okay to destroy the earth for the sake of momentary comfort and profit, we beg you. When the demons that lust for power lead our leaders to start wars and target civilians, we beg you. When the demons of prejudice say it is okay to redline ethnic neighborhoods and to make LGBTQ people into political wedge issues, we beg you. When the demons who want us to trust only in quick results wear us down with fatigue and despair, we beg you, cast them out. When the demons we know so well lurk in our hearts and distract us from you, we beg you, cast them out. Amen. May we, like the people in the story who are amazed when they hear Jesus teach and who are amazed when they see him drive back evil, be amazed in our own ways. May we be amazed that God's kingdom is coming and amazed that Jesus stands with each of us seeing both our demons and our potential for life. May we be amazed that Jesus cares enough to work with us to cast out our demons and to set us free. So if you can, please take your announcements page, open it up to the middle, where you will find the words printed for our hymn of the day, Cast Out, O Christ. Let's stand and sing together.
the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Please be seated for prayer. This week in prayers, please remember Tim and Maggie, Paul, Dylan, Christopher, Candace, Shirley, Lynn, Mark, Janine, Jen, Carol, Donald, Beth, Charlene, Pat and Connie, Lucille and Butch, Tasha, Mary Jane, Jim and Bonnie, Carol, Gary and Angela, Tom, Dennis, Marv, June, Kelly, Glory, Denise, and the Grishot family. As we celebrate Christ embodied in human form, we pray for God's blessing on the church, the world, and all of creation. Loving God, we pray that your example of teaching with confidence and authority builds up your church in love. May all church leaders and teachers honor your instruction and model your inclusive ways. God of grace, receive God. our prayer. Renewing God, we pray for all of creation, that waterways flow clean and clear, natural spaces are protected, and our planet is healed. Let us commit to thoughtful care of the earth. God of grace, receive our prayer. Justice seeking God, we pray for those in government and community leadership, that they may lead with honor and mindfulness. May they remember their covenants and be upright in their ways. God of grace, receive our prayer. Compassionate God, we pray for all in need especially those who have known rejection, any who struggle with long-term illness or chronic pain, and those without access to safe housing or health care, and any others who suffer. God of grace, receive our prayer. Still speaking, God, we pray for our congregation, for its artists and musicians, for its educators and caregivers, that all gifts are used to care for those in need and to live out your example of accompaniment, gospel witness, and love. God of grace, receive our prayer. For peace among nations and for the well being of civilians, especially in Israel and Palestine, Russia, and Ukraine. For political protests in Germany and France for primary elections in the United States and all areas of political deliberation and tension, God of grace. Receive our prayer. For all victims of gun violence, especially in Illinois, Alabama, California, Kentucky, and Florida, for safety and provision for all migrants, God of grace. Receive our prayer. For those suffering severe storms and flooding in Southern California and for all areas of the country experiencing storms, ice, and other difficult weather. For all facing unemployment and underemployment and for all seeking fair wages and equitable employment opportunities, God of grace. Receive our prayer. Eternal God. 
We remember all who have been teachers, mentors, and companions in the church and in our lives. We trust that all who have died rest in your loving care. God of grace, receive our prayer. Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We ask God to use our gifts, time, our talents, our words, and our financial resources to help drive out the demons of hatred and greed that plague our world and to blow in the fresh winds of hope generosity and peace. Let us bring our gifts to God as we stand and sing him 467, we place upon your table, Lord. pray. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table, that we receive what we seek and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. By the leading of the star, he was shown forth to all nations. In the waters of Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. At Jesus' table, heaven and earth are joined as one. Come and see.
Let us pray. Giver of every gift, Christ's body is our food, and we are Christ's body. Raise us to life by your power for the benefit of all and to your glory now and forever. Amen. Amen. God who names you, Christ who claims you, and the Holy Spirit who dwells in you, bless you and <clears throat> remain with you always. Amen. Amen.